It's Dolphin Day. Let's talk about dolphin. Man, I love the dolphin. Everybody loved dolphin. In fact, if we had class right now, we'd go around and we'd start interviewing people. See, is there anybody that swam with the dolphin before? And I bet you there has been. We go over and we interview them. We tell them, how do they feel? They look rubbery. Do they feel like rubber? And they go, yeah, kinda, a little bit. I said, I've touched fish before. Fish are really slimy. Is a dolphin slimy? And they go, no, they're not slimy. We go, oh, wow, you swam with a dolphin. Was it great? And they say, yeah, it's awesome. I say, did you grab all the fin and have it sw uh, swim you around the pool? They'll go, yeah, it was great. And I said, at the end, did you give it a kiss or did it kiss you? We get the real story. Dolphins, we got to talk about dolphins. There's so much to know about dolphins. There's over four, there is 45 different types of dolphins. Uh, there are dolphins that go up rivers. Uh, there's six dolphins and that's what they do is they swim up the river. I gotta show you something. Move it down, move it down, move it down. There is such a thing as a pink dolphin. A pink river dolphin is a type of dolphin that goes up the Amazon River. They're pink. I wanna see it. I wanna touch it. I wanna swim with it. Back, we gotta do some notes about dolphin. Dolphin, 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 dolphin. Dolphins fall under the same mammal category as whales. Cetaceans, remember? We talked about that the other day. Cetacean in Greek means sea monster. So the question is, is how is a dolphin different from a whale? Here's your answer. A dolphin has small cone-shaped teeth. And that's what makes a dolphin different from a whale. But wait a minute, there's another cetacean out there. Porpoises, porpoises. Uh, how is a porpoise different from a dolphin? I mean, this is a porpoise and that's a dolphin. How are they different? In the Puget Sound, there's a couple types of porpoise. I see them all the time off of Golden Gardens. I go out there when I go salmon fishing or paddle boarding. I always see the porpoise going by. One time last summer, I saw eight of them jumping out of the water. They look just like a dolphin. How is a porpoise different from a dolphin? Well, a dolphin has small cone-shaped teeth. A porpoise has small flat teeth. So that's the difference. Whales have big teeth. Dolphins have small cone-shaped teeth. And a porpoise have flat teeth. Ah, porpoises and dolphins. We're talking about dolphins today. Like I said, there's 45 different types of dolphins. I'm not going to talk about all of them. You know, some of the dolphins have the name whale in their name. But they're not a whale, they're a dolphin because they have small cone-shaped teeth. Like there's this one called the long-finned pilot whale. It's not a whale, it's a dolphin. There's a short-finned pilot whale. It's not a whale, it's a dolphin. It has small cone-shaped teeth. There's this one that's called the false, as in fake, killer whale. It's not a whale, it's a dolphin. They have small cone-shaped teeth. And then there's the, the orca whale. It's not a whale. It's a dolphin. They have small cone-shaped teeth. <laughs> yeah, you're not going to go whale watching and see an orca whale. You're going to see an orca whale, which is really a dolphin. Look, there's a dolphin. Ah, there's so much to know about these dolphin. Dolphin, you know, dolphin are a lot like humans. How so? <laughs> You ever stick a thermometer up a dolphin? You haven't. Well, if you do, well, the temperature inside of a dolphin, 98.6 degrees. That's the same as us. Are they dolphins or are they humans? Dolphins, they have emotions. They're happy sometimes. They get sad. They get depressed. They get angry. Uh, they get a little playful. <laughs> dolphins have moods just like humans. Are they humans or are they dolphins? <laughs> dolphins, they can speak, they have a language. Uh, they make these series of clicks and squeals. <coughs> they make these series of clicks and squeals. Their language is they believe, uh, we believe, 10 times faster than humans. <laughs> you think I speak fast? You gotta hear these dolphins. Okay, I'll go over here, I'll show you. I can watch 
watch dolphin videos all day and sometimes I do. Dolphins, we're talking about what they are. Well, they have a body temperature of 98.6 degrees. They can... They can hear... They can... They have this language. And they make this series of clicks and squeals. Now, out there in the wild, dolphins, they travel and shoot... Don't know what's going on. Dolphins travel in huge schools. They're called herds. I gotta show you something. This is off of California. A herd of dolphin is anywhere from 100 to 200 to 1,000 to 3,000. Can you imagine seeing 3,000 dolphin in the water at once? Wow. These dolphin, the Pacific white side of dolphin, we'll talk about that a little bit more. So the question is, well, if dolphins can talk and they make sound, how do they hear? I mean, Dolphins don't have ears. And if they travel in like a school of a couple thousand, how do they talk to each other? To, how do they focus the sound on just one? Well, what they do is that uh, they make the sound in their melon. Uh, then they focus that sound exactly on what dolphin it wants to speak to. I said, how does it hear? Well, it hears with its lower jaw. Its lower jaw will vibrate and then that's how it picks up the sound. So if this dolphin wants to speak to that dolphin, it's going to send the sound waves to go right to its lower jaw. Hey, you want to go play? And then that one will turn, focus its melon right on its lower jaw, and send them the sound waves, and they'll have a conversation with each other. <laughs> so they have a body temperature of 98.6 degrees. They have emotions. They have all kinds of moods. Uh, they have a language. They can speak, and they can hear with their lower jaw. Not only that, they can see inside of each other. They have a, a form of ultrasound in which they can see and scan the body of, uh, of, of other things. And by doing that, you can see the, uh, the heart rate. You can measure uh, to see what kind of mood they are. If it's a really fast heart rate, that means that they're excited. If it's a slow heart rate, maybe, uh, maybe they don't want to play. I'm not going to talk to that person. Man, dolphins, dolphins, dolphins. What else do I want to talk about? Well, you know, maybe, uh, maybe the best thing I could do is maybe tell you a couple stories. Because these dolphins, I'm not sure if they're dolphins, humans, or superheroes. <laughs> well, first of all, let me tell you how we've exploited the dolphin. World War II! <laughs> the Germans knew we were coming. The Germans knew that the Allied forces were going to come and invade and try to, try to come on land. So they knew it. So what they did is all around France and Germany, they put them. They put these underwater mines. Our boats, we didn't know them. And we'd go and hit the underwater mines, blow up. We lost a lot of boats and a lot of people because of that. So then the Navy, the Navy had to come up with something. Well, how are we going to find these underwater mines? So what the Navy did is uh, try and draw a boat. Is they developed a sonar. And the sonar is a sound wave. What goes until it bounces, hits something, and then it'll bounce back. And then the captain will go, aha, there's, there's a bomb right there. Steer away. But then the bomb makers got smart. The bomb makers, they figured out that if they, if they put a coating around their bombs, and this coating will absorb the sound waves, they won't get bounced back. Oh, no. So then the boats would go hit the bomb again. So it's always this battle between the bomb makers and the Navy. The bomb makers are always putting a coating around their bombs to keep the sonar from bouncing back to the boat. Next, history lesson. Persian Gulf War, number one. Saddam, they knew, Saddam knew that we were going to come into the Persian Gulf. So what did they do? All around the Persian Gulf, put all these uh, land mines, there's water mines in there. What did the Navy do? Well, the Navy... They knew they were out there, and maybe they had a covering that they couldn't find. So what they did is they enlisted some dolphins. They don't know exactly how many dolphins are currently enlisted in the Navy. They think it's somewhere between 150 and 200. But in the Navy, 
Whenever our boats go out to hostile waters, they're escorted by a squadron of dolphin. And what the dolphin do is they swim up in front of the boat. And the dolphin sound uh, sonar is way better than ours. So they're trained to go see if there's a bomb. And if there's a bomb, then they go back to the captain. Yeah, captain, captain, throw me a rope, throw me a rope. So then they throw him a rope, they grab it, and then they swim around the chain, and there's a buoy that floats up to the top. We didn't hit one bomb in the Persian Gulf. In fact, wherever we go out there in the water, we have these uh, dolphins that are escorting us. I'm running over here. History lesson number two. 9-11 changed stuff for us. When we were vulnerable here in America. Terrorists were going to come and start blowing stuff up. So we had to look at ourselves and go, where would they want to blow things up? Well, one place that they found is right here in the Puget Sound. Over at Bangor, there's the Bangor Naval Station. And that's where the nuclear submarines are. And they said, it'd be so easy for somebody to get on a boat in Canada, a sailboat, and just come into the Puget Sound, plop it in the water, swim up to a bomb on a nuclear submarine, kaboom! No, not in other watch. What they have is they have the dolphins, and the dolphins are always patrolling the water up there. They have a camera on their flipper. They're going out there, they're always on patrol, and what they're looking for is a suspicious swimmer. And if they see a suspicious swimmer, they take a picture of it. And then they go up to their sergeant, download, download, download. They download the picture, and then, uh, then the dolphin will bring them out to the suspicious swimmer. You wanna go swimming with the dolphins this weekend? Go on a boat to Banger. Jump in the water, start swimming around. A dolphin will come up there. Take your picture. A sergeant will also talk to you. That's our Navy story. Stop it, stop.